Welcome to the B-Sound Podcast. My name is Dan B. And today our guest is Matt Bacon, aka Bacon.Bits on TikTok. Matt makes helpful videos for musicians as well as creates podcasts and runs a marketing company called Dropout Media. Matt, thank you for being here and welcome. Uh, did that cover who you are? Yeah, basically. You know, that's what I do. Is I market bands, I do podcasts, I run around places, uh, you know, listen to loud music. Yeah. Are you also a musician or... Uh, yeah, I play like mostly classical and jazz. Oh, cool. Um, I always joke with my friend, uh, Andy Patterson, uh, from a bunch of hardcore bands that I couldn't really be in a band because I feel like I'd have too many people judging me. Oh, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'd be in a band and everyone would be like, Oh, he didn't do this, this, and this. Oh man. Right. So I'd have to like really make it like very obviously like this is me and my friends making punk together. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best reason to be in a punk band, right? Is the, uh, I mean, yeah. You can just do whatever and then nobody cares. Exactly. Unless you're not punk enough, then, then you get in trouble for that. <laughs> I think I've really spent a lot of time in my younger years of that. And even now establishing those punk bona fides, making sure, trying to like become a scene elder. <laughs> 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 that's the real dream the punk scene elder yeah it's like you know like be able to like arms crossed at a punk show just being like yeah oh yeah the jaded guy in the in the back going like okay you know i i i i know i know sunny from testers i'm cool <laughs> <laughs> right on <laughs> um uh, anyway yeah i see you got um your your infamous cigar that you, yeah, you there's, is, there's always like I'm like I don't know I I started smoking cigars because I stopped drinking. Oh, um, and now I drink a very little bit. Um, mm-hmm. But um, I started smoking cigars because I not stopped drinking, and then like somewhere down the line, I became like a tobacco guy. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm like buying pipes and like looking at different types of tobacco and like making friends with old men in the park, <laughs> 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 being like, hey, so. Like you're like also into cube believers. They're like, oh, I'm into these. And oh, right. You know, it's a whole like, social aspect. Oh, oh it's great. It's like being seventy. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, even like you know, like I, I'm a musician too, and I play. I've played a lot of bar shows and whatnot. And it's like, sure. There's a whole social aspect of like, hey, let's go outside and smoke, or you know, whatever. Sure. And there's like that whole thing, and you you can really network with a lot of people that way. And that was always like something I really like. I, I remember in high school, like wishing I smoked more because I remember being like, man, especially because I went to high school in France where like if you're old enough to breathe, you're old enough to smoke. Oh, wow. So, you know, that was one of the things that got me smoking more was that aspect of being like, yeah, you know. Yeah, fair enough. I love enough. Europe. I re- yeah, you know. Um, if you'd like a very weird French smoking story. For sure. When I was 14 years old, I was outside walking around the block, having a cigarette with my friend Hugo, who was 13. An ambulance pulled up next to us and rolls down the window. And I thought they were going to yell at us. And he asked us for a light. Oh. <laughs> I was like, this is sick. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I have found my home. <laughs> That's great. The ambulance yeah, is, right? is probably the last person you expect to ask. Yeah. But, you know, anyway, yeah. we need to talk about real shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I found you through social media, through uh, yeah. TikTok. TikTok, is that is that what you say your biggest platform for what you do? Uh, or? Instagram is slightly larger. TikTok is like 10.8 and Instagram is 12.2. Oh, okay. Okay. So are you, okay. is it the same content over on Instagram that TikTok? Yeah, it's, and honestly, for a while I was doing different content. I mean, I was doing the main bacon bit would be the same on both. Mm-hmm. But then I was trying to do more like influencer content, which is sort of how I initially grew my page. Mm -hmm. But my income and my interactions went down dramatically. So I really cut down on the sort of like influencer, like cool kid stuff. Even if I do have some of that going on, you know, fairly regularly, Mm -hmm. I kind of learned like, but also like the other thing is like, you can post way more on Instagram than anyone realizes. Oh, really? Like more? How, how do you mean like more? Because like, I think that a lot of people like don't want to post more than like once or twice a day for risk of like 
breaking their reach. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to post like six times by the end of today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, like, uh, you know, it works. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's one of the things I've seen you harp on, on TikTok anyways. Hey, post at least three times, if not more. So is that, yeah. are you saying it works the same way for both platforms? Yeah. Cause like if you're making something good and you're spacing it out, mm -hmm. right? Like that's the big thing I think is that people post a bunch, but they don't actually space it out. But if you space it out with like two or three hours between each piece of content, you know, then odds are it's going to all work. Yeah. As long as it's, as it's like good and something people actually want, which is the problem a lot of bands have. Right. What, yeah. What would you say that bands could do to, um, you know, to better their social media? A couple things. Yeah. I think, um, I think that right, the first and foremost is if when you're a band early on in sort of the zero to 10,000 fans mode, mm -hmm. a lot of your fans are going to be early adopters. In music, what does that mean? It generally means they are musicians or people extremely interested in music. It's not normal people, right? You're not getting average fans you're getting musicians this is especially true in metal where basically everyone owns a guitar <laughs> right right so create content around that create gear content create behind the scenes content create how to's create um commentary tracks do amazing that was something that really like knocked it out of the park for capra was we just had commentary tracks people were stoked to see that right like really using every part of the animal and really showing people like, hi, here's a million details and sub details about this fucking band. That tends to work pretty well. Right. So people, you know what I mean? I think so. I think so. It's like, um, people really want to know the story, right? And, and yeah, exactly. And that's all it is. It's all just storytelling. Yeah. Right. I made a remark the other day. I made a, I was like, Hey, um, on social media, I was like, hot take. The number one thing you have to do before anything else is learn how to tell a story. Yeah. And, yeah. And I, I just think that's really important. So. And the hack for telling the story is just documenting everything. Hmm. You know, and just showing people like, here we are going to rehearsal. Here we are rehearsing. Here we are doing this, you know, here we are printing shirts, here we are packing whatever, right? Like that's the secret to telling a story. It's just giving people every aspect because they're going to see it. At least some of them are, at least your fans are. Mm -hmm. And they want to have like ownership as a part of it, right? Which is why I also tell people like, if you sold a bunch of shirts to fund your CD run, right? Then like, say that, like, you know, say when you get the CDs, thank you so much for buying shirts, everyone. It funded these CDs. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, because when you do stuff like that, you're giving people a sense of ownership, right? Like it's, that's really something I strive to do with like Bacon's Bits is like getting testimonials and sharing people's shit to my story and replying to comments so that they can feel like they're part of the journey. Oh yeah, that makes sense. You know sense. what I mean? And so it's like... That's what you want is you want people to be, feel like they're coming along with you. Right. So the value, you know what I mean? So the value you're putting out there is not only showing yourself, but also uh, bringing them with you, like saying like, like you are part of this just as much as we are. Yeah. You know, and it's like, and this is why it's like important to document your relationships with other people in the scene, you know, cause I think a lot of people will get freaked out when they see like, Oh, well, like one of my best friends is Dana from Swans. And we've been friends since I was like 19 years old. Mm. You know what I mean? And she was playing to like eight people. And I thought her band was cool because they sounded like Sabrosa. Like, you know, like when you show people those connections and when you show people like, oh, hey, especially in metal where like life or dumb is really uh, highly valued, you know, when you show people, oh, hi, I have a longstanding relationship with, 
this person. Right. That's really helpful. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and it's helpful to just show, hi, we're showing up. We're doing things in the community. We're a part of this. We're not, um, you know, just some, uh, some more fucking idiots. <laughs> sure. And, and um, I think it's, w- would you say it's important to be authentic about it too? Like, well, that's, but that's, it's hard to be, it's hard to not be authentic when you're documenting. Right. Right. But I mean, I guess what I mean by that is like, show the mistakes sometimes too, and show the, you, you know, you're not a perfect person. And, and I think that's something a lot of people are afraid of in social media is showing they're less than perfect. And that stops them from posting. Yeah. And that's always like, I feel like, I also understand this is like a pretty different game for women just because everyone is horrible. Mm. Um, you know, but like for dudes in particular, I think it's just like own it. Like don't be afraid to, um, don't, you know, don't be afraid to like post something a little silly or humiliating or whatever. Like I have, I, in one of my like social media webinars and talks that I give when I, when the world was good and I still gave talks. Um, you know, I would always show, I have this bacon spit I did the day after I like took too many antibiotics without eating. And I like threw up and was like a fucking disaster, like mm-hmm. first blood vessels everywhere, like looked like a zombie, but I still made a bacon spit. And this is like three years ago, maybe. And it got a huge reaction. And it's like, sometimes that's what you do, right? Is you're just like, and that's also the thing too, is like I now that I have that bacon spit where I look like I'm gonna die, like <laughs> now I don't feel bad about any bacon bits I ever do. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, that was the that was the bar. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't think I think that was the least healthy I could be and do a bacon spit. <laughs> sure. Right? Like that was the weakest possible like level of life I could be at. So if I was below that, I just wouldn't do one. But until I get to that, like 15% level. Fuck it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, um, I, I've seen you do it too on um, TikTok fairly recently. You were like, oh, I'm sick, but I'm, I'm doing this because this is my commitment. And Oh, yeah. Because I like had just landed here and I was like jet lagged and angry at customs for who knows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but yeah, like this is the thing, right? Is like, and I think that only like you have to force yourself to have that consistency. And I think that's one of the biggest places I see bands falling down is they let themselves get lazy and they're not consistent. And it's like, well, you need to just fucking plow through, you know, even if it does suck, like, believe me, a lot of the day to day stuff that I deal with sucks. And it's just like, not stuff I want to do, but it's like, you have to do it. You know, you have to, suck it up and be like, okay, we're going to grind through because we want to work on a men without hats campaign. Right. Which is what I'm probably doing tomorrow. Oh, you're working on men without hats. I work with men and flock of seagulls. Oh, wow. Wow. That's very cool. It's fucking My dad is like, so beyond stoked that I work with flock of seagulls. (laughs) That's funny. They were just supposed to be here recently and they had to cancel from some kind of, I don't know what, but yeah. No, yeah, it's fucking so fun. Like, it's like, you know, getting paid to make Iran jokes. <laughs> I face Iran, not the country. No, no. Anyone who wants to take this out of context, <laughs> let's just let's just be clear on this one. So far away, so far away. That's where we're at. <laughs> yeah, running far away. <laughs> no, nothing bad, please. Um, I don't need to get canceled this week. Right. Um, <laughs> Oh man. Um, but yeah, like, you know, like there's other diverse stuff like that, but yeah. So I just think that you have to have that consistency, right. And you have to just grind through and you have to like, cause like even setting up flock of seagulls ads, right. That's fun. But like, if we're going to do 15 designs or something, you know, like you have to set up like all the images for each of those designs mm. and that just, that kind of sucks. Yeah. I like working with flock of seagulls, right? I'm not talking shit on anyone. I'm just saying like, yeah, like there's parts of how it works where like, whatever, sometimes you're going to spend 20 minutes 
uploading flock of seagulls designs and then one of them didn't upload right and then you have to go back and it's and you're just like why lord um, <laughs> it's a grind you know it's I, a grind. but like you have you can't stop and i think that a lot of people stop yeah well i think that's what weeds out a lot of people a lot of people get weeded yeah. out of the system because they're not willing to grind and do it yeah you know and i just think every day you just gotta wake up and you know that's like another big thing that people don't necessarily understand is like I work when I'm on this side of the ocean, I work 10 a.m. to midnight hmm. every day, even if I don't necessarily have 14 hours of work to do. Like today was a slower day. Right. But I was still putting in 14 hours because why? Because, well, shit, well, if I have a dead hour, I can use that time for networking. I can use that time for, um, you know, a podcast, I can use that time. I can go and I can make a phone call to someone I haven't spoken to in a while. Right. right? But it's like forcing yourself, like you have to make yourself be in the office, you know, and it's the same with your band. Like, I think you can't be, you know, I think a lot of times people will just go, Oh, well, there isn't really much we can do right now. So fuck it. And it's like, there's tons you can do. You just need to like sit down and, you know, even if it's just like a lot of times it'll just be like a brainstorming activity. Mm -hmm. you know and I just sit I have some of my brainstorming activities I just sit down and do that right and it's like cool I did a brainstorming activity and now I have some ideas I can do later on or maybe it reminded me of something I need to do and then we're good you know or following up or building relationships you know like especially as a band like the amount of time you can spend just going through band camp and finding things that are exactly like you and then making friends with those people. Interesting. So you're, you're, that's something I hadn't heard before. So network with people through Bandcamp. Oh yeah. It's a great way to find artists. Huh? Great. Right, Cause there's like genre tags. Right. And just and click yeah, the genre even, tag. And people even put in band tags. Like there'll be like, you know, black and thrash bands or whatever who put Slayer. Mm -hmm. And you can just look at the Slayer tag and be like, okay, cool. Let me sift through and find every band who tagged Slayer because I sound like Slayer. That's a that's a fantastic idea. Huh. That that reminds me of a question I had that I wanted to ask you, which is um you mentioned that you brainstorm, you have brainstorming sessions. Is that how you come up with ideas for your social media? Um, what's what's your process for because you you post a lot, you know, so like you must have some kind of process where you're able to be so prolific it sort of comes just with the doing it a lot. You just are, have a fertile mind for it. You know, what helps is that of the four videos I do a day, two are answering questions and one is uh, like a duet, mm -hmm. you know? So I really only have to have one creative thought at any juncture. Okay. Um, well, you know, like I really only need to have one idea. And that idea is generally based on something I did that day. Okay. All right. Or something I learned. Yeah. So would you say that's a good tactic for musicians to do, artists to do? Yeah. Just think about like, what the fuck did you do today? Right. But also cool. like duetting people or... Oh yeah. The, the duetting is huge. Everyone seems to think that's corny, but like it gets a ton of views and like it's the best tool. Like I'm a huge, huge on shout outs. Mm -hmm. and that's like really the best way to do shout outs on tiktok you know what i mean like i think i don't really see other people i just don't see other ways to do shout outs effectively and i feel like that's a really like good way to be like hey i think this person is smart and maybe go check them out you know and i a lot of those people i do at especially the ones i do it regularly will send me a little thank you note and be like hey cheers you help me grow my audience Right. Which is like mm -hmm. what I want is I want, you know, my goal is twofold is to help bands and show everyone how smart I am. So they give me money. <laughs> right. And it's like, cool. If that's what I want. Then I've got to bring value and I've got to benefit my community. Right. Right. And that's all I'm trying to do is benefit the community. Cause like, you know, that's just how things work is we just have to keep giving and if we don't keep giving, then the insurrection happens and America is fucked. <laughs> right. 
no, that's 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 a solid plan. I think is um, I mean something that took me years to figure out was providing value was important. You know, you just think, oh, I'm in a band and that's my value is I'm in a band and I do this thing. And it's like, well, no, there's a lot more to it than that. You, you're, you got to think more about what you're giving people and. Yeah. Being the team player. Yes. Cause I think it's easy to be like, oh, I'm in a band and that's my value. I am Bon Jovi. Right. <laughs> But it's like, no, he's fucking Bon Jovi. Like his value is that his records actually sell and people actually go to his shows. So other people are making money on him. Right. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? His value is that he's in demand. Sure. But even um, like I just listened to your last podcast with um, oh, what was his name? Uh, you do a podcast, right? You yes, have- I have a couple. I have one with Scotty Tank Crimes, one with Chris Santos. And this um, was, this and was Matt, uh, Matt, Matt meets the music industry, Matt meets the music industry. And, um, God, I can't remember the name of the guy. Dan but, Sugarman. Yes. Yes. That was it. And he Your mentioned, friend. he mentioned in that, that, um, he feels like a servant, like someone who runs a restaurant, you know? And then, yeah, I think that was a, a great way to look at it. It's, you know, yeah, he's not just, um, you know, he's not ghost or something like that. He's doing what he does. And that's, that's a, a good path to take. It's just serving people and giving them a connection. And like, it's like, you know, music is fundamentally just like a mind altering drug that we all want. <laughs> okay. Right. In what way? What way? So, well, cause like, you know, you listen to, Oh, what kind of metal do you like? I'm going to make this goofy. What kind of metal do you like? Um, you know what? I, I mean, I like metal, but um, my, oh, main, well, my, main, of... my main thing is like grunge, right? I came up in the okay. grunge era. Okay, got it. Okay. So like you can listen to like a Tad song mm-hmm. and get real fucking bummed because it's Tad. <laughs> yeah. And that's like real downer grunge. Uh-huh. You know, but then simultaneously you can listen to like a partying, I don't know, like Soundgarden song or something and get like hyped. Right. Yeah. And it's like, it's like the mind altering drug aspect. Okay. And right. And I think it's like, but when you get a closer connection to people, then that mind altering factor becomes tighter, you know, like I know Tad, um, you know, like we're friends. Mm-hmm. And so like to really like hang out with him and be like, wow, like that's sort of what goes into some of this music is really cool. You know, and to be able to have any sort of connection with him makes it more profound. And it's the same with any artist, right? Like there's this MTV study that's like people are like 73% more likely to buy if they feel they have a personal connection to the artist. Wow. That makes sense. Yeah. And it's like when you're in a world where like fucking David Coverdale is doing live streams and answering random like Midwestern moms questions, like what's your fucking excuse? Yeah. Wow. You know what I mean? That's a good point. Like that's all he's doing, man, is he's just giving, you know, Mm -hmm. in his David Coverdale way, which is awesome. Right. You know, um, but like, I think that's the, that's the thing is it's all just like, give, 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 give. How do you make people understand that and connect and feel like, Oh, I can be a part of this narrative. Yeah. Well, how, so I work with a lot of bands who are starting out and um, how would you say that they should start by, how do they give, you know, bands that are just coming out, just fresh off the, uh, the assembly line. Are we putting bands on assembly lines now? Well, you know, <laughs> well, you know, like um, they're, they're just, they're just coming out, you know, they're just doing yeah, yeah. Their thing for the first time. Um, you know, I think it's a couple things. I think, um, The main one, Mm -hmm. the obvious one is booking shows, Mm. right? That's like the classic way to make connections and meet people and be like, oh, hey, here's like a constructive way for me to give back. And that's like the easiest way to get in touch with like a real booking agent is to like go find the sickest band on that bill or find the sickest band on that roster and be like, hey, I want to book them for a one-off. Admittedly, that only works if you're in like a major market but it works. 
Yeah. But it puts, but regardless, you can still like, um, regardless, you can still connect with people. Right. And you can still like book shows and then build relationships and make people be like, ah, okay. Like this guy is a real motherfucker and he like actually wants to be here and actually wants to contribute. Yeah. You know, which is generally pretty helpful. The wanting to be there and wanting to actively contribute thing. Yeah. You know, so I think booking shows is really good. I think, you know, mixing other bands, you know, like whatever skill you have, contributing that, taking photos of other bands. For me, it was being a journalist. A lot of people, I forget that like people don't know this anymore, but like when I grew, like I in high school, like lived almost famous. Oh, cool. Like I was like in tour buses and interviewing Judas Priest and Kiss and all these people. Um, you know, like by the point that like I kind of had to retire from it when I was like 20 because I was like, I don't know if there's anyone else I could do. Oh, wow. Um, well, because like I like got on the phone with like Phil from ACDC and I was like, OK. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was like the pinnacle there. Yeah. Like it was like, OK, in the last year I've done like ACDC, Ace Freely and Judas Priest. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Like I still do stuff with like Hellfest, which is fun because it'll be like, oh, hey, like hang out with Milo for a minute. Hmm. Um, which was very surreal. Um, and I almost cried, but like, (laughs) you know, um, I think, I think it's just, you know, you got to find ways you give back, right? You just got to figure out what skills do I have and how do I contribute? And, and booking shows is an easy one, but there's tons of other things, you know, even being like the guy who makes buttons, you know, or being, you know, cause that's like an easy thing to do for free or almost for free. Mm. You know, or being the guy who can make screen printed shirts, you know, that's a slightly bigger time investment um, than the buttons, but still, right? Like, how are you going to give back? Right. That's a, that's a great question. You know question. what I mean? It's and it's yourself. like, how, what, you know, and so it's just go based on your skills, you know, because it could even just be like helping other people dial in their tone or something. You know, because maybe you're like the resident tone expert in your town. Right. So it's kind of like taking what, figuring out what you're good at and contributing that. Yeah. That makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, let me see. I, I have a few questions here I wrote out for you. And if you don't mind, do you have time to answer? I have time. I have time. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, <clears throat> So you run a uh, a media business called uh, uh, Hang on, where'd I have this here? Oh, so Drop you run out. out you run Dropout Media, right? Yeah. Um, do you would you be able to, to like just take me quickly through what you do for an artist through that? Yeah, because basically it's sort of two sided, right? There's like the agency side, which is like for labels and bigger artists and like music companies um and then there's also the uh the sort of artist consulting side Mm -hmm. right and the idea of the artist consulting side is essentially okay cool how do we build out plans how do we give access to sort of the knowledge i've gleaned working for labels managing bands booking tours yada 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 you know how do i communicate all that knowledge in one easy place and help you, you know, so that takes a variety of formats from one-on-one phone calls to, um, you know, one-on-one phone calls to six month plans to like in-depth analyses of your band and where you're at, you know, and being like, okay, cool. Like how can we, uh, you know, how can we position you better? Right. Or how can you position yourself better? How can I empower you to, advance you know what i mean yeah um stuff like that you know so our most popular offering is definitely the six month plans which are just like an in-depth checklist guiding you through Mm -hmm. you know um because it's like oh hey like here's an empowering document that like lets you have the 60 ideas or the 100 ideas and the 100 steps to go from point a to point b and to like really improve yourself so i mean Okay. So it's really up to the, to the bands to follow through on those things for the most part, but 
um, are there things that you do like behind the scenes, like, Oh, run their social media or. Yeah. You know, but like kind of... it really depends on, like I'd rather empower people than do it all directly. Like we'll run your social media, mm-hmm. no problem. And we'll do a good job and we'll run your ad campaigns and running ad campaigns is sort of separate and like a separate skill set. And so that's again, more on the agency side and that just makes a little more sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of like consulting, you know, I think it's, I think you're a lot better off being a guiding consultant than a done for you consultant. Hmm. Right. Cause like you're going to just scale your business and make a lot more money and help people a lot more. And that was really something that allowed me to grow during COVID was really becoming a guiding consultant rather than a done for you consultant. Right. And still doing it for people when the situation is right, or frankly, the money is right, mm-hmm. you know, but realizing that most of the time you're better off being like, okay, here, let me guide you through. Cause then you can do it in a way, especially for artists, you can do it in a way that fits your vision and helps you, you know, and then it's like, cool. As we work together, then it's like, cool, what opportunities can I open up for you based on where you're at? Right. Cause it's like, I'm like the, the dude who like runs black light media, which is like a metal blade subsidiary. Right. Hmm. I can't just like give every band who gives me money a shot with that label. Right. You know what I mean? We sign like, four or five things a year. Mm-hmm. And some, sometimes I worry that might be too much. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Like, well, there, there's a lot of overhead there, right? I mean, for signing yeah. Of bands. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and there's a lot of reputation overhead. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like, I got to sign bands who like make money and <sighs> are going to, you know, not piss off the rest of the staff. Right. right. Like that's so much of the music industry is like, are you going to piss off all the people I work with? Yes or no. <laughs> it's, it's very social, isn't it? Like very much. Uh, well, but it's game. also, but it's just like, it's like, you know, when you're, when a band is on a release campaign, right. With like a, a mid to large label, then like they're talking to their product manager every day, mm-hmm. you know, via email, at least, you know, it's, it's similar to like a coworker relationship. Right. And it's like, well, if I was going to bring someone onto a team of coworkers, you know, as a colleague, like I would want to make sure that person wasn't going to fucking annoy the people who like really run the machine. Right. <laughs> you know it's, what I mean? Well, and yeah. I think that's like, the thing, like that's a big part of it, right? Is like I just I don't want to sign a band where it's like, oh my god, I'm gonna get so many complaints. People are gonna fucking kill me because <laughs> this band is annoying. Right. Well, that looks bad on you as well. So. Well, that's the point, right? Is it's like, oh, he brought in these people who just wasted everyone's time. Yeah. Yeah. You I, know, which is like the opposite of what you want. Sure. Um. I forget where I heard this, but it kind of reminds me of this thing I heard where um, the people who sign you, they have a, as much as like they want you to do well, they also know that they're still going to be in the business, even if you don't do well. I think I heard Billy Corgan say this actually from Pumpkins. Yeah. He, he said that, um, so even though they're fighting for you to get more money or whatever, they're not going to fight tooth and nail because they still have to work for that company always. And they're going yeah. to... Yeah. And so it's really on the artist needs to understand that, that, that there's everyone's beholden to someone else and other things. It's not just a selfish thing. Yeah. Well, that's, that's like the thing, right? Is it's like, you know, a music industry career for like a good level person is going to last 20 to 40 years, Mm -hmm. you know, a, band career, the amount of the percentage of music business careers that last 20 to 40 years, or the percentage of band careers that last 20 to 40 years. Right. Dramatically different. Mm -hmm. Um, which is just, you know, how the system works and is what it is. Right. But like, you know, most bands day in the sun is like three to five years. 
Maybe. Sure. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, unless they figure out some kind of way to you have more longevity yeah yeah but it's just like think about the amount of bands that you see first to five yeah yeah it's a that's a harsh reality but it's there um would you say so you market basically metal and rock bands or is it more yeah but i get pulled into like hip-hop projects now and again and like i said like flock of seagulls is like sure pop rock basic pop basically you know um i'm doing this really cool band called peaks right now we're sort of like Imagine Dragons type uh, stadium rock. Okay. And we just got a song in Love Island, which was cool. Oh, sweet. Yeah, so that was like pretty surreal. What, like what'd a, you, you got it in what? Love, Love Island? Love know. Island. It's Love like Island. a big British dating show. Oh, okay. Um, so it's like the equivalent of getting it something into like The Bachelor here. Oh, huh. That's like cool. It, it was pretty surreal. I, when I got that email that... Uh, the manager had hooked it up. I was like, that's, that's sick. <laughs> yeah. um, Those victories really make it worth it. Doesn't it? I mean, you know, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. They help keep you going. I would imagine. Um, Definitely. Uh, you mentioned that you were, were a writer and I did see you had some eBooks available. Is that something you, you, can you talk about that? Yeah. I mean, so I, I write a lot of music industry articles less now for a variety of reasons, but I still probably crank out four to six a month. And, um, you know, and I think that basically those eBooks I wrote a few years ago, kind of out of just articles I had already written. And I just kind of was like, okay, let's compile these into some eBooks. And Mm -hmm. I think people, you can get them on my site, dropoutmedia.net slash eBooks, I believe. Um, And it's, I don't know, I just, want to compile a bunch of information I've learned and I've heard a lot of positive things about them over the years from people just being like, Hey, this really helped me. Sure. You know, which is all you want to hear, you know? And it's like, (laughs) and there's everything in there from like being the main dude in your band to being, uh, going on tour and how to book a tour is one. And then there's the social media one that I think everyone, that's like the most popular one and desperately needs updating, but apparently people are still getting, game from it so Hmm. cool yeah uh and a lot of them are written in a pretty snarky fun way so i think if you want to like hear me tell some snarky anecdote about las vegas and this is where to go um, (laughs) like people routinely like email me about stuff i put in there that i'm like oh okay (laughs) um (laughs) <laughs> like you'd forgotten like, about it or something. Yeah, know? exactly. Well, there was something I said about like the people who don't do this have to buy their own drinks in Vegas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, I was like, okay. Um, but yeah, you know, so I think, I think doing stuff like that is important. And I think a lot of people would get a lot of value out of them. And mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of the general thesis behind how I write eBooks is to not really give specific tactics as much as it is to give overall strategies because i feel like tactics go away overnight whereas strategies are kind of forever right and like people can have a strategy and be like okay this resonates and i can use this going forward whereas you know you give you tell someone here's the best you know the best instagram hacks for 2021 that's cool but a lot of those things shift. Right. Right. You no. Know, and I also think if you're not, if you're trying to kind of have enduring success, then you don't really want to take too much advantage of tech of tactics like that. Sure. Kind of like flash in the pan. Right. So like you're saying like maybe a, a tactic or like a, I guess a hack or a tactic or whatever it would be like, um, whatever's trending at the moment, but a strategy is, more so like DMing evergreen. everyone who comments. D- DMing everyone that comments. Interesting. That's something I do. Yeah. Every every couple of weeks on a Sunday night, put on some Star Trek and just like every single person who's commented, just send them a message. Wow. Star Trek helps that? No, I'm just playing. I mean Star Trek helps everything, man. Yeah, I like Star Trek too. Um, um yeah. Well, that obsession goes deep. <laughs> fair enough it's it I, i'm sure it's one of those shows you can put on and just be like you know i've seen it a million times but it's cool to have in the background while i do something 
Yeah. And <laughs> I, I'm just, you don't want to get me into Star Trek because that'll just be the rest of this conversation. Oh, okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll stay out of it then. <laughs> I, I don't know anything past next gen much anyway. So <laughs> very disappointing. Oh man. I know. I know. <laughs> I've had people tell me I, I need to really get into it. <laughs> I just think Deep Space Nine is like a real triumph for that show. Yeah, that's what I heard. I heard it really, not to get too far into this, but yeah, I've heard it's it's probably the the pinnacle of it. And well, I think there's, I think there's different pinnacles depending on what you want, mm-hmm. but I think that in terms of like, it's probably like I like I think in terms of character development and diversity although the new ones are extremely extremely diverse uh but in terms of like pre revival trek it's probably the best in terms of just like oh hey we have these specific characters on this specific place rather than but with like amazing stories and whatever it doesn't matter the point being post a lot about your band make a lot of content (laughs) engage with people like but like if your thing is star trek talk about that yeah. Right? Like I have a really goofy picture that my friend Zach Mild took of me in my Star Trek uniform that I repost every couple, every couple, every year. And it does great every single time. Cause it's like, Oh wow. This guy like owns a Star Trek uniform and is like clearly very goofy. Sure. And like clearly is passionate about that. And you can just build connections. Right. Cause like Star Trek, like as much as, you know, people want to be like, Oh, it's geeky. Like Star Trek is a pretty popular thing. Right. Right. And so like the amount of like valuable connections I've made over we're both really into, I don't know, Aileen Garrick from Deep Space Nine. Right. And we just like do Garrick lines and it's like that turns into a connection. Right. Like my boy here who lends me guitars when I visit um, Dan, like we became friends because his email is bonesmccoy at gmail.com. And I was like, that's the coolest thing ever. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> let's be bros. Yeah. Um, you know, and so it's like, talk about that shit. Like with high desert queen who are on, um, can you, can you edit out the <laughs> are on part? The what part? Where I said they're on. <laughs> um, oh yeah. 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 Okay. I almost leaked something there, Okay, but everyone kind of knows it's fine. Um, <laughs> but, uh, like high desert queen is a band I work with who like do a series called movies that doom where they like, post about different eighties movies they like every week and you know, their fan base of dudes over the age of 40 are like super stoked to have a band who want to talk about Samurai Cop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that's why it's important to be like going back to this idea of being authentic. It's like, and just putting yourself out there as who you are, because a, it's going to get you a lot more fans, a lot more people who, and, and you don't have to be your, be anybody else but yourself, right? So that's like the second part of it is since you're being yourself, you also, it's just easier to get those fans that are into the same thing you're into. Yeah. And you're not really excluding anybody by saying, hey, I like Star Trek or whatever. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, exactly, right? That's the point, right? Is like, you're not excluding anyone. You're just... I'm into this thing. If you're into this thing, come join me. Right. You know, like I do a lot of like Instagram stories of like whatever I'm listening to and people who like know me know that my listening is kind of everything from like ska to like Miles Davis Obscura to like old blues to rap of Mm -hmm. a bunch of different areas. You know, like I like a lot of things and I have like a way of listening to music so I can consume a lot Mm -hmm. of things. But like that ends up getting me a lot of connections, right? Because like I'll post a Thin Lizzy thing and get like 10 dudes hitting me up and that's fun. But then I'll post like uh, over the pandemic, I listened to every Louis Armstrong live album I could find Mm -hmm. so I could determine the best Louis Armstrong performance. It's the 1960 birthday concert at Newport, uh, specifically the performances of Tiger Rag and Kokomo. Um, And... uh, but like I got like people who were stoked on that, who were like following as I was just like, hey, here's another Louis Armstrong record I'm checking out today. You know, fucking live album number 63. <laughs> right, it's an epic as journey. I work my way through everything on YouTube, everything on Spotify, you know, like let's go. Um, 
you know, and I think, I think that's just how it kind of needs to be. And that makes sense. Yeah. That it's makes like, sense. you just, you share stuff you're into and slowly you build relationships and people go, wow, I am into this too. Yeah. And then good things happen sometimes. Wow. Other that's... times you get made fun of for being a nerd. Wow. That you're going to have that on the internet anyway. Gonna... Yeah. I was going to say that's increasingly rare. Right. Well, especially nerdum these days is like, it's almost cool now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that's a whole separate conversation. I'm not entirely sure. Hmm. I, I think there's layers to it, but regardless, um, yeah. Okay. Um, well, we're almost to the hour point, but um, I, I do ask this to everyone. And um, I'd just like to know if... Um, all right, so this is the final question. Is there anything today that I should have asked you, but I did not? There's lots of things, but I don't like... I, I don't know. Like, if you were like, what's your favorite, like, Bruce Kulik era Kiss song? Hmm. Or like I don't know, Kiss guitarists ranked. That would have been a that would that would have been a great question to ask. Oh well, let's hear it. Let's, um, let's hear it. <laughs> okay, man, I wasn't okay because I, I go back and forth on this a lot. But uh -huh. I can tell you, I feel like top three. I pretty consistently feel it's like Ace, Bruce, um, Vinnie Vincent, and then I really like Mark St. John's. Hmm. Okay. But like he's only only on Animalize, so you can't really put him above anyone else, even if Animalize is like low key super sick. But also, I feel like Bruce Kulick is like routinely underrated and like gave that band new life in a way that like the only comparable is like Ozzy Sabbath to Dio Sabbath. I feel hmm. where it's yeah. like, oh hey, we're gonna have like this stylistic shift because we changed a member. But it's almost easier to do that when you're stylistic when it's the vocalist, right? Right, because it's like night and day, but like Bruce like gets his own kiss sound after like a couple years of like again, Vinny and Mark are cool, but they're not really like I don't know, like Crazy Crazy Nights is amazing, even if it has the creepiest kiss lyrics of all time. <laughs> He's got the face of a woman in the hands of a child. Uh. Wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Stanley, come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's work on that one. <laughs> we had a few questionable things over the years, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh but i don't know like i don't know i just like talking about music nerd shit that's um, cool that's cool I, I appreciate that answer too it's uh i, I never know what people are gonna <laughs> suit my way when i ask them that question because people can take it so widely and it's it's always fun to ask it yeah i think it's so, a good one yeah thanks. thank you so much for having me yeah thanks for being here matt and um where can people find you if they want to find you i'll put it in at the comments too. yeah at bacon.bits on all the social channels, you'll find me. It'll be cool. You can DM me. I'll probably reply and, and say something. And, uh, you know, stay safe. The pandemic still isn't over. Get vaccinated. Uh, and, you know, party on. Party on. Yeah. And, and just for anybody else listening, um, Matt's very approachable. He, you know, I just approached him with this podcast and he was pretty cool about it. So thank you, Matt. I do it again. Take care. Yeah, appreciate it. You too. Bye. Bye now.